Hello, everybody, and welcome to our career exploration interviews. Today, I have a very special guest, Pat, and he is from the company Cape Clasp, creator of Cape Clasp, that I should say. So welcome. Awesome. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, you are welcome. So today, Pat, I just wanted you know to answer, well, I should say ask, <laughs> some questions um, about you and your position at Cape Clasp and how you even created and started the company. So let's start with that. How cool. did you get to being um, where you are at Cape Clasp right now? Geez, yeah, it's like a, a long um, journey to where we are now. Basically, uh, over five years ago now, I think this is probably our sixth summer um, working on this stuff. We uh, uh, Back then, I had um, started an Instagram account and was just sharing like uh, places around Cape Cod that I loved. To, you know, Cape Cod is where I spent uh, all my free time in the summer. It's like where I met all my best friends. Like I have a, a lot of great memories. And uh, I was kind of losing my connection there, but you know, still spending all, because I was working up and I'd moved up to Boston for work after school. And so um, I was really just trying to find an outlet to kind of stay connected to the Cape, kind of, you know, I was missing kind of that, uh, that connection I used to have. And so it started out as just hiding geocaches around the Cape and having people track them down. Um, and these were originally just like this, it's like a nerdy hobby called letterboxing where you hide, uh, you know, the coordinates or, or instructions on how to find something and people track it down and they can, there's a stamp in there and, you know, you create a log book. Um, and we were hiding like stickers in, in these, uh, in these uh, geocaches. Um, and, you know, it kind of evolved into, I was in New York one weekend, I saw uh, a bracelet shaped like a hook and, um, I was like, oh, wow, Cape Cod's a hook. I wonder why no one's made a, a Cape Cod style bracelet like this. <laughs> um, and so, uh, you know, started, that started me down this like road of trying to make, you know, how do I make jewelry? How would I make a bracelet like this? And, th and then um, we, uh, I just kind of was working on that as a side project, um, sharing kind of my experience and everything over Instagram on social media. Um, and then we started, you know, hiding those bracelets. And then uh, I wore one into a, a store once and they were like, oh, do you sell these? Uh, it was a, a place, uh, Kensington's in, in Mashpee Commons, mm -hmm. um, a, an awesome guy named Eric, who, uh, who was our first like wholesale customer. He was like, I'd love to carry some of these uh, bracelets. Um, so from there, we were like, oh, we got to create a brand and a, an identity, a website. Um, and uh yeah, the next step was we kind of came up with this nonprofit partnership model. So what we did at that time was just uh, get the okay from the National Seashore to say, hey, for each one of these bracelets, we're going to donate 15% of profits to your organization. Would that be all right? And uh, they were on board. We started marketing the bracelets online and through the in through stores that were interested. Um, and it's really just kind of been like this iterative snowball effect from there in terms of uh, we partner with awesome nonprofit organizations uh, to create a cool product that matches, like really reflects their cause. And uh, we market it through social media, try to bring awareness to these uh, nonprofits and the causes they support and, um, you know, the, the, uh, what they're working on at any given time. And so, um, and it's really just been super fun. I love doing it and um, it's grown I, I mean, it's grown slow and steady for, you know, five years. And so now uh, it went from being kind of like a, a part-time fun hobby to uh, three years ago, really realized like, wow, I can make this my full-time job and really uh, start to build this into a bigger uh, company and operation. And so, uh, yeah, we're still on that path, working on a lot of fun stuff uh, now. Um, yeah, we're like launching, we've launched a new line made of recycled ocean plastic too, that's uh, under the same brand, but um, kind of trying to push into like a sustainable supply chain as well. So um, yeah, we just, you know, do a lot of creative products, get, give back to nonprofit causes and, uh, and yeah, it's kind of yeah. the, the gist of it. <laughs> yeah, which is amazing to hear that, you know, in just such little time that you guys have pretty much boomed and started from a bracelet and you guys mean you have merch now i mean i'm wearing one of your sweatshirts right now i i have your ring on as well so awesome, awesome. You, know, yeah, you guys make earrings um those bracelets they're ticos correct yes yeah ticos they're like uh cup style bracelets that are made of uh, recycled ocean plastic this is one we're doing for fagawi before it got canceled Aww. um 
but we're still going to make them up and, and, you know, give back to uh, their organization. Um, but yeah, we, you know, our, all our customers have bought jewelry from us. So we started with a bracelet, but we're going to do like sunglasses next and uh, fun stuff that, uh, y- you know, just, um, yeah, fun accessories and, and merch and all like, you know, just trying to be creative and, and tell cool stories. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I'm so excited for those sunglasses. I mean, I have almost one of almost everything you have. I have the bracelet. I, have the bracelet. I, I, I appreciate that so much. That's so like, awesome. Yeah. The bandana. Like I have, oh, yeah. so, like I love your guys' stuff and I definitely, we do appreciate here at the Atlantic White Shark Conservancy. You guys do make pr- products to help benefit us and we appreciate it so much because it's something that, you know, myself and everyone can get behind. Cause I mean, it's awesome pieces that show off like how much we love sharks and how much, you know, that, you know, we love our ocean. So we really do. Okay. Yeah, no, and we, I mean, we've really grown alongside you guys as the kind of, um, you know, sharks on Cape Cod came to this national scale. And it was, you know, obviously, uh, it certainly wasn't by design in any way. I know you, you guys were just really ahead of the curve there. And uh, it just kind of s- stoked our interest and everything. You know, it was really um, an awesome, it's been really awesome to, you know, watch everything going on with you guys too. And, um, br- you know, bringing Cape Cod and sharks to a national scale. It's been amazing to uh, be a part of it. Awesome. Thank you. So you said, you know, you had a previous job before even thinking about this. So did you have any training or any kind of experience with this kind of business and merchandise before or something yeah. you kind of dove in head first and learned? Totally. I would say like when I was, you know, really young, like uh, middle school, high school, I was always curious about business. Like I loved, um, my folks would take me to P town and we'd like go to the local shops. And I'd love, like, there was a guy, uh, um, there's a store P town, uh, Tim scapes. It's like an awesome, like, you know, apparel store. I loved like going in there and picking his brain and like knowing like how people kind of start something from nothing. I, I really like the idea of like being my own boss. Um, I went to this, uh, a college called Babson college outside of Boston. That's, a entrepreneurship focused school so everyone gets the same business degree so and uh you know i just loved like uh, uh kind of that realm of like vineyard vines life is good those are stories that just really resonated with me and i always um enjoyed them i guess i didn't know at the time that i would ever like i didn't have anything to contribute to the fashion world or anything like i didn't know uh exactly what i wanted to do but i loved that kind of realm of entrepreneurship um while i was at school i kind of leaned into, uh, you know, there's really a a track of um, what are you like, what are you going to get good grades in and where can you get a job and all that kind of stuff. So I ended up focusing on mathematics and and finance. And so um, that was kind of like, I didn't, I still got the entrepreneurship degree, but I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do out out of school. I, you know, was really just focused on getting good grades and and, uh, kind of taking classes that stoked my interest at the time. Um, and so from that, I was always kind of uh, caddying and uh, at a golf course here in Boston and, and on the Cape in the summers. And then uh, after school, I worked a couple jobs in the banking uh, realm. So I had a, a kind of um, an assistant role at a bank um, in downtown Boston for two years. And I focused on this thing called the the CFA. It's like a, basically like getting a master's degree, but you just take these uh, certification tests. Um, and so that's like a, a three or four year path, depending on how many times for me, four years, because I failed some of the tests, but that, uh, you know, it can take a while. Yeah, it happens. So um, I was really just, you know, trying through all that, just trying to find like um, what I wanted to do. Like, you know, I switched jobs. Um, got a job at a more, you know, it was a, uh, definitely a smaller firm, a more competitive firm. You know, I really wanted to get my hands dirty and do some real work. And I think like two things, you know, it took me a while to really uh, realize this, but it was like, I couldn't find uh, anyone in these organizations higher up than me that I really was like, oh, wow, that's what, what I would want to be doing down the line or in the future. And I just never felt like I was doing any real work. Like I never felt like I had real responsibility. I just was, um, I mean, what I was doing was important to, you know, some component of the business, but it wasn't really driving, uh, you know, 
propelling anything forward. I really didn't feel like I just really wanted to take a more aggressive career path. And uh, I just wasn't finding a footing in any of the things I was trying. And so, yeah, this side project, Cape Clasp, and the, and the Instagram account was how it really started out, um, was just kind of my oxygen. It was like I would come home and I would really just uh, grind away on it just because I, you know, I was chasing what gave me energy, what gave me, you know, made me uh, kind of enjoy uh, my evenings. And, and it gave me a lot of fuel while I was at work because I was like, you know, able to do this during my break and just, um, you know, chase something I enjoyed doing a little bit more. But yeah, I spent about eight years in that, uh, you know, finance world um, for without even knowing what Cape Clasp was or what it would be or, um, mm -hmm. yeah, it wasn't even an idea yet. Yeah, and I think that's important to note how you said how, you know, you were in a job that like, maybe, you know, you enjoyed, but you didn't get like that drive and that, you know, that feel of what you really wanted to do. And I, it's been a theme for us, for everyone that I've been interviewing this week is that all of their suggestions for anyone, you know, that maybe is looking in it into careers, if that's a high school student or a college student, or maybe someone that's wanting to switch like you, and it's like, they're more older, it's that find something that fuels your fire and, and finds your, your passion. And if you're really, truly passionate about it, you're going to find a way to make that your job. And totally. Yeah. Continuing that, that, that theme for sure. Yeah. I think the hard part is like, it takes time and you don't know exactly what you're going to want to, uh, you know, do with your life in the, um, and I guess like the, yeah, the other side of it is that, you know, without the job and what I was doing, I could have never, uh, done this, you know, never bootstrap the br brand the way we did, um, and kind of slow, grow it slowly. So, you know, there's no, like, um, I guess like you know, wherever you kind of take your career path, you might not be doing exactly what you want to do, but it's it's taking you one step closer to figuring out what you want to do. Oh yeah, of course. All all previous experiences gives you something that you can apply for something in your in, in your future for sure. Absolutely, yeah. And being that entrepreneur side of things that you are, um, you know, a lot of people might think you know being that you you don't work in a large office, you know, you're in a very small space. So I mean, maybe is there any ch challenges to that? Or is there any benefits to that? You know, that you are working for yourself, you are maybe in a smaller space than some people. Sure, yeah. So. I mean, just like, yeah, candidly, we work in like a, a live work um, situation up here in the city. And then we have a place down the Cape that's kind of where we frame all our content out of and is more of our like home. Um, so uh, the good part is I kind of wake up and I'm at work every day. That's like uh, awesome. Um, but that's also, you know, the downside is you never really are getting away from it or, you know, I, I enjoy doing it. So it's, you know, um, but obviously that's always a challenge. Just uh, when do you kind of step away from what you're doing? Um, mm -hmm. Right now, it's actually just given the state of everything, it's worked out really well for us because uh, as you scale, the challenge, the real challenge is the uh, the admin the administrative roles is in like um uh, or the fulfillment roles of like stuffing envelopes printing labels making bracelets doing the stuff that we've always kind of uh done in house um those things are, are really difficult to scale because it be it once it becomes too much work for one person or two people uh it's it's almost like you got you really got to push like to add another person there's going to be excess slack for that third person. There's, you're always kind of uh, trying to build the organization to have some um, some slack in the system, so you can. Ex so if there, what you know, as you grow, you're able to uh, take on that additional load. Um, so that's kind of difficult trying to figure out like how do we make that work, you know, with the space and and really just uh, with limited resources. How do you continue to uh, keep everything in house and do it the way you enjoy doing it? Um, without, uh, you know, the, the the alternative would be to have like a fulfillment center or, um, you know, have some third party logistics firms that uh, would take, you know, would take that burden off, you know, obviously you'd be paying for it, but they would help you uh, streamline your operations a little. Uh, but on the flip side, like it's kind of worked out really well for us right now because we can kind of revert to the way we were doing things a couple of years ago, which was, you know, we kind of wore a lot of different hats and uh at five o'clock i'd kind of shift my mindset to all right we got to make sure we get to the post office before midnight to get all these orders out and whether or not we had someone here helping we always had there was always something to do and there still is it's still you know always like that so um yeah it's like it's it's worked out you know that uh 
we've kind of built a business that works for us and um you know it's it's not always uh perfect but it it's it's definitely um a cool setup and i, I really um have you know it's it's had a few different iterations it started on a, a little um coffee table desk that a friend gave me that had a bunch of drawers and i i could fit everything into that and then now it's uh you know half of this space here um but you know it'll keep growing and excited to see where it goes next too yeah that's awesome and um i wanted to go back to how you said you know you have your place there in boston but then you also do a lot of your content around um your other place here on on the cape and if anyone doesn't follow cape class on instagram do it i love the stuff that you guys put out especially with your dogfish he's adorable awesome <laughs> so um that would be awesome if we had a fish appearance but how do you find that balance between then trying to create your content in a different space maybe than that you're working out of every day yeah it's a it's definitely a challenge it's kind of you know if you've kind of uh i guess like having that dichotomy or whatever you'd call it it kind of makes it easy in terms of when i'm here i'm working on growing the business you know uh focused on our advertising channels, how we're, you know, uh, what our next marketing campaigns will be. And then when we're down there, it's more like flip into that creative mindset where, all right, let's build some content. Let's create the assets that'll drive these initiatives and product launches and all these different marketing campaigns forward. Um, so, you know, in that, in that sense, it's worked out really well is that, you know, when you're, uh, as anyone will know, it's like tough to multitask and and if i was here and also creating content here a lot uh i get pulled away to my you know email or someone would have a you know we'd have to have a meeting or something so it is nice to be able to uh have that kind of you know these two places serve the different functions that's also just how it's kind of you know built itself um but yeah it, it works out pretty well Awesome. Yeah. So then with that, um, I know you just kind of went over what you guys do there in your offices, but do you have a typical work work day? Is there really even a typical work day and anymore for anyone? But yeah, yeah. Uh, so these days are pretty atypical, but a typical day, um, we have kind of our team shows up between nine and 10. Mm -hmm. um, and in the morning, we're kind of just strategizing. Uh, typically, you know, we're doing a daily uh, marketing effort, but you know, with always with a goal of um, <clears throat> educating or building something that people will find interesting that has value and is uh, you know like valuable content that that stokes people's interest. That is something that's actually uh, you know valuable to them uh, rather than just running a promotion or or doing a sale. Um, and you know, a lot of times it's just kind of brand building. Uh, exercises um, so that's always a, a constant effort um, there's a customer service effort of making sure that everyone is uh, happy that you know with any business you're gonna have issues with lost packages or uh, thing you know just issues that happen uh, that arise along the way and there's a, uh, a right way to handle those things and get better at it so that's a big effort every day um, it's just getting orders out the door, making sure we have our pickup scheduled and that, um, uh, you know, that, uh, we're, we're delivering on our promise of shipping next day. If that's what we're, we're saying, like, and then now we're at like three days cause just cause of the, the current state of things. So, you know, making sure we're, we're holding ourselves to those deadlines and, and not, um, I'd rather it gets more important to keep your current customers happy than, uh, you know, be focused. Like, so right now our prior marketing efforts are a little bit slower and we're really trying to deliver, uh, to our, to our customers and clients. And, um, yeah, so, you know, some, there's some stuff like this we get to do. And then there's, uh, uh, you know, so like different styles of, uh, marketing. And then there's kind of like, you know, business development, it could be a new product line or, um, so really it's kind of a little bit of everything we do. Uh, right now we have, um, four people on the team and then myself so five people day to day uh you know plugging away at this stuff uh so everyone wears a lot of different hats and it can be pulled in any kind of direction so um yeah it's a it, that's kind of a typical day i usually will go to about five or you know six and and usually exercise and then kind of you know plan the next day and uh we've been doing that for a 
a long time and it's yeah it is like every day is a little different and uh, um i'm more of a night person than a morning person so uh yeah Awesome. Yeah. And I think that's important to note, you know, that every day is different, but then also, you know, being in a smaller team like yourselves and then us here at AWSC, you know, we all wear these multiple hats and depending on what day it is or even like what time it is during the day, you know, you're going to be in that different role and that if that is marketing or management or, you know, just figuring out, you know, how you're going to ship out orders that day, you know, everything is, it's, it's a moving clock and you just have to maybe put on a different wheel to make it work. So Absolutely. Yeah, I'm always just keeping a list and trying to figure, you know, pare it down to what are the activities today that'll add the most value to what we're doing um, and, and propel us towards our like long term goals, you know, where we want to go. Because, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, there's a million things you could you could always a million different directions you could go in every day. And it's, it is it can be hard to kind of figure out what uh, is most important. But um, yeah. Yeah, I think that's important for anyone in any job is kind of sit down and be like, what is my goal for today? And I think that's important for anyone, actually. So Absolutely, yeah. No, um, and then going on um, with your job, what's the favorite thing that you get get to do? I don't know if you have maybe a favorite memory um, about Kate Clasp or just what's the favorite thing in general you have about your job? Yeah, the you know, my two favorite things are like the first is uh, just the like, I think just I love um, I love Cape Cod in New England. I think like, especially the outer Cape is just kind of, uh, there's like a quote that it's like the last fragment of an ancient world. It's like this, you know, crazy place. You're like 30 miles out to sea on this like tiny peninsula. Um, it's so wild out there and it's kind of almost, you can take it for granted sometimes that, you know, there's just incredible wildlife and um, scenery like right in your backyard, like, you know, two hours from where we are here in Boston. Um, and, uh, I just love kind of discovering cool things like it, around, you know, of my hometown in, on, in Woods Hole too. Like mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago, we got a video of, uh, some like seals just kind of, you know, lounging in these like shallows and, and it's really, you know, like there are just so many times I do that. Like, I love doing that, um, just about every weekend, but then only, very infrequently do you actually capture something that's you know really gets you excited and uh and you know piques my interest so those moments are super exciting you know we've had a couple uh last year you know uh this time last year we we got a video of a right whale that was in the <laughs> boston globe and and that was just like a really exciting thing to bring awareness to these you know creatures that are uh critically endangered um and you know we got a great white shark video last year that because of atlantic white shark was on the today show like, like just a short clip of the video and you know those things really get me excited just uh i love that and then um really just using our platform to uh tell cool stories run uh cool campaigns um like the one we're working on right now is uh it launches on saturday so it's called um it's like a the next or kind of a revamp of our ambassador program. So, um, like m most brand ambassador programs, it's uh you you can sign up and you can get exclusive discounts and deals and um, you get early access to certain products and stuff. Uh, and we've had something like that running for a while, but we're like, how can we uh, revamp it and do something fresh and interesting? And so um, this time of year is when like typically all the um, over sand passes on the Cape are opening up and you can go uh, get your pass. And like, it's always like for me, you know, just going to the beach for the first time in the spring is like one of my favorite, you know, days of the year. Um, there's like this nervous excitement that I don't have that, you know, I don't have all the stuff I need to get the pass or, you know, there's just like, so I was like, how can we uh, kind of capture that feeling? And so we're, um, you know, that summer, summer is coming kind of feeling. So we're doing these, uh, uh, sticker packs it's like a fun this is like a it looks oh, like a car so sticker cool. but it's like cape class cleanup crew and then uh so you put that on your car your you know your laptop or whatever um and it ha they're individually numbered and then you can we pre-post these uh envelopes and or uh postcards and you pick a cleanup location and so we're going to keep like a digital map on the website and then a physical map here for 2020 that'll say like you know everyone who's uh join the ambassador team and um and you know what what beach they've uh really like uh 
said they were like that they've pledged to clean up. And so, uh, yeah, we, you know, we always run a big Earth Day campaign and it kind of got sidelined this year. So it's like, how can we get creative, do something fun? These are kind of the projects I uh, really like uh, doing. Yeah. Yeah, that's an awesome campaign. That's really cool. Um, so this video is going to be posted on Sunday. So that campaign will already be out. Um, yeah, it'll just be started. So yeah, yeah. capeclass.com, it'll be uh, kind of, you know, Basically, we're trying to create this founding team to seed the first, you know, iteration of this uh, experience and in, in the, the physical map we're building and everything. So um, we always have had this uh, program where if someone sends us a self-addressed envelope to our, our Cape House, uh, they get, um, they, we send them a free sticker pack. And so I just always love getting down there and opening up the mail and going through all these letters and um, it's like, one of my other favorite yeah so that's like the other favorite thing about my job and uh and so this is kind of uh, a way to keep that going and have like a physical uh representation of our ambassadors and the in the impact we could have um so yeah so you know stuff like that is definitely my favorite thing to do yeah i agree the community engagement so my role at the conservancy conservancy is the community engagement manager so i go out in, into the community and i talk to the students or if it's adults and that's one of the my favorite things just hearing you know that positive feedback and hearing you know how maybe you have Im impacted someone or showing you know like what they are doing now and how they've changed because of what you are doing so um i agree it's pretty awesome but yeah that's okay. awesome my last question for you though is do you have any advice um you know if maybe someone that is wanting to be an an entrepreneur themselves or wanting to start a business or maybe someone is trying to figure out how they can maybe dive their hand in helping out in ocean conservation in their own way yeah uh i mean it goes along the same lines of everything i've been saying you know it's uh it's tough to know exactly what you want to do but um i think the the important thing is to kind of focus on the things that get you excited and give you energy and really like focus on when you're young, like learning from people in those, those spaces and fields that um, know a lot more than you. And if you can't get in touch with those people in person, you know, it's so easy now through podcasts and YouTube and books and, you know, all the content out there to really uh, enrich yourself, learn from the best of the best about whatever you're interested in. Yeah, and, it, and I think uh, it's really, you know, once you kind of are able to define that in some way, it's really trying to carve your own path. You know, it's gonna be a lot easier if you're doing something novel and unique that um, is different than what other people are doing. Um, and, you know, you can't really expect to find success right away. It's gonna be, you're gonna make a lot of mistakes along the way. You gotta uh, learn from those and just keep growing and, and um, follow what's working, really chase the things that are working for you. Um, and I think like the important thing is just to start making waves is, you know, it, to use our tagline, um, don't talk about it, you know, just really um, take action, show people that you're, you know, a, a go-getter and that you're um, excited to, you know, pursue the things you're, you're working on um, and let your work speak for itself. Um, and uh, yeah, I think like, you know, you really just have to find what you love, like chase it uh, relentlessly and, uh, and, you know, start making waves. Definitely. Awesome. I think that is an amazing note to end on. So for anyone that's interested in Cape Class, check out their website. They are on all forms of social media and your handle is just at Cape Class, correct? Yep. Yep. Awesome. And then capeclass.com. So you guys check them out. They have some really awesome stuff. And thank you for joining me today, Pat. Awesome. No, thanks for having me. This has been great. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.